I'm Richard Moorcroft and welcome to the Letters and Numbers Market, where risky nines are traded, along with safe sevens, and a bit of math skill pays dividends. And two people whose stock is always rising, firstly, she never sells herself short, Lily Serna. Hi Richard. How are you on finance, by the way, Lily? I actually have a finance degree. Oh, oh well, you're probably not too bad at finance. I thought you were. I thought you were doing uh, work in the uh, in the Barrier Reef area. Yeah, I'm doing honours at the moment in maths and biology, but my undergrad degree was in maths and finance. How about you? Are you good at finance? Well, look, I suppose I, I've. I've I hope I've always been reasonably practical with money, but uh, you know I've never done a lot of uh, a lot of trading in stocks and shares and things. So, not particularly entrepreneurial, rather more just practical. Well, that's a safe approach. It is safe, but let's take risks tonight. So look forward to it, Lily. And let's say hello to the definitive derivative, David Astle. <laughs> well pronounced. Very well pronounced. <laughs> do you um, do you use stock market terms when you're doing crossword clues? Would they be useful? Actually, I used one recently that was very, very difficult, I must admit. Uh, the answer was 3-10. That, that was the answer? That sounds difficult enough. <laughs> no, that's the, that's the number pattern. And oh. the clue was share index adjusted dollar in-house. And uh, if you adjust dollar, mix it up, you get all ord. In is in and house, a house of the zodiac, is Aries. So all ord in Aries. That's a very tricky financial clue. I may not have picked that immediately. <laughs> Welcome, David. Thank you. Let's meet our two contestants for this evening now. And first up, our carryover champion, Tony Louie, our medical officer, returning tonight for his sixth and what will be, of course, his final appearance. Hello, Tony. Hello, Richard. What a run it's been. Yet another nine last night. And I think in your, was it your first or second game you scored a nine as well? So you've been going well. Yeah, I had another nine in my second game. We sometimes call getting a nine either a full Monty or a hole in one. You've actually got a real hole in one as well. Yeah, about three years ago, I actually hit a hole in one on a short part three. Um, I hit the ball onto the green and unfortunately because of the undulation of the green I couldn't see it go in the hole. But when I walked up I found the ball in the hole and that was a hole in one. Fantastic. Well, we hope maybe another hole in one tonight. Fingers crossed. Thanks. And Tony's challenger this evening is mechanical engineer Gillian Stevens. Hello Gillian. Hi Richard. Mechanical engineering, what motivated you to move in that direction? Um, I think it was a boy. <laughs> well, that sounds, like a, that, that sounds like a very sound motivation. Um, how did that happen? So that was what took you in the direction of the study? Yeah, I think it was. Um, actually, more honestly, it was um, our school went on one of those excursions where, they, where you can choose your career. Mm. And I saw a working model of an internal combustion engine. And it looked, it looked quite interesting and appealing. I thought, I want to build that. And, and now, the sort of mechanical engineering that you do, have you fulfilled that dream, at least in part? No, it's not, it's not automotive. I'm actually in the... It's, it's a heavier type of engineering. Uh, we design mooring systems. Even bigger than yes, automotive engines. Big stuff. Well, we'll have some big stuff tonight. Great to have you with us. Thank you. Good luck. In fact, good luck to both our carryover champion, Tony Louie, and our challenger tonight, Gillian Stevens. <laughs> So we hope you've got your pens at the ready as we begin with the letters game tonight. And uh, Tony, of course, you get first selection. I think you know how I normally start. I'll start with a consonant. I was going to guess that. G. And another one, please. V. And a third. N. And I'll switch to a vowel, please. A. Uh, one more vowel. I. And another vowel. E. And I'll switch now back to a consonant. S. Uh, one more consonant. T. And I'll end with another consonant, please. And lastly, C. Here's the first 30 seconds. Did you like your first mix, Tony? Uh, I just got a seven. A seven? That's a very solid start. Gillian? Seven. Seven for you too. Yep. Let's start with yours, Gillian, if we may. Staving. Staving. Nice. And Tony? Casting. 
Well, that sounds almost like an engineering term. Very strong. Uh, great start from both players. Uh, that ING, obviously very profitable. I couldn't see an 8 using that ING ending. Um, so I used the ING mixed with uh, Stave, in fact, for vintages for 8. Nicely done, David. But good work from Tony and Gillian. Seven points each. Let's move on with some more letters now. And uh, Gillian, this time, your chance to choose. Can I have a consonant, please? You can. Let's start with N. Vowel. I. Vowel. Okay. E. Consonant. D. Consonant. T. Consonant. R. Vowel. U. Consonant. T. And a consonant, please. And lastly, P. And time starts now. How did you go with that first selection? Uh, seven. Seven? Very nice. Tony? I had a seven as well. Let's start with yours. Uh, intrude. And uh, yours, Gillian? Intrude. You have the same? Could you just uh, verify, please, that you've both got the same thing? Nice, David. Put on your suit belts. I think we're in for a very good game. Uh, putted. It was a, a six there, but intrude was the best. Well done. Good work. So, another seven points for Tony and Gillian. Well, our scores are absolutely level, so let's see if we can break that as we get mathematically inclined. And, Tony, would you like to uh, make a combination for us, please? Uh, Lily, I think you know my normal regular, one large and five small. One large and five small, thanks, Tony. It's like going into a cafe when somebody knows what sort of coffee you order. Yeah. You know. I'll just have the, you know, the, the one. The usual thing. Maybe we should give this a name. We could call this what? Uh, call this one The Adventurer. The Adventurer. One, one large, you know? five small. You know, he's going off with a big adventure. Works for me. The Adventurer. Here we go. Seven, eight, seven, five, two. And the large number is 25. The target number is 834. Let's hit there now. usual combination go? Uh, I think I've got 835. 835, just one off the target. Well done. What about you, Gillian? <laughs> Not even close. Not even close. Not to worry. So, Tony, you're one off. Can you take us through your method, please? Uh, yes, Lily's uh, 25 times 7. 25 by 7 is 175. Minus the 8. Minus the 8. 167. One six, 167. Uh, I think I've made an error, actually, calculation. Okay, so you've got a problem there, Tony? I do, yeah. So, Lily, how close did you get with this one? Um, I got there and I got into kitchen sink as well. <laughs> so you've used and everything? I've used everything, which means um, it was fairly difficult. So here's what I did. 5 by 8 is 40. 40 minus 7 is 33. By 25 is 825. And if you add on the 2 and the 7, it gives you... 834. And almost takes you off the board. So, our scores at the moment are still absolutely equal. Tony and Gillian on 14 points each as we head into our first break and uh, our first word mix for you. Net linty. And this time the clue, how you have to think to solve this. Back in a while. Yeah. 